down now to the program. So Larry, I can invite you up here, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Greg. Okay. Probably everybody here knows where the old brewery is, the old brew house. So we're going to talk to her. Rob Kirkwood is going to tell us a little bit about what's going on there, some of the ideas that they have for use for that. He moved here uh, to attend St. Martin's, actually, and he graduated at Pearson Engineering School in 1988. And he worked in the State Parks Department for 26 years after that. And he is pr promoting the idea of having a countywide special purpose district to rehabilitate the old roof house. He wants to use the uh, roof house for public use, like uh, museum, uh, community work, uh, not work, but gathering place for, for meetings for those people who groups that would like to use it for that. And uh, like I say, art galleries, so forth. Anyhow, I was interested because, you know, we do the duck dash down here, and I thought, this has been going on for a long time. Let's find out what they're trying to do here. So I asked Rob if he'd come and give us a little update on what's going on at the old brew house. So let's welcome Rob Kirkwood. Thank you for inviting me to speak. Um, I think, uh, first, a thank you also for the Mushroom Fest, where that's where we had our, that's where I met Larry. And, um, I was really surprised how many people come from Pierce County, King County down to that event, so it's really an economic boost for the county. So the Old Brew House Foundation was uh, originally the Friends of the Old Brew House. We, in 2005, we formed that to compete with the PFD facility when the Recreational Athletic Center was built. Some water, we asked some water to compete and promote the idea of using the old brew house, getting hold of the old brew house. And um, at that time, they, they um, did an engineering study. And of course, that went on, the money went on to the Children's Hands-On Museum and the Regional Athletic Center. So we are a 501c3 organization, and we're organized to provide leadership to bring together a broad range of stakeholders and fill still pay. Their development of a plan for acquisition, restoration, and public utilization of the old brew house. Um, this start a little bit of history of the brew house. This is when George or Leopold Schmidt started the brew house in 1896. Uh, based on it's the water, he moved out here from Montana to do that. <laughs> Characteristics of the old brew house. Of course, it's got a, a, the Italian architecture. It's built with Tanino sandstone, shehalis brick. Built for one thing, gravity fed brewing, and that is uh, cool for gravity fed brewing, but for just about any other activity, it's very hard to deal with because it's got all these rather relatively s small floor plates. And when you start talking about ADA access and all those type of things, the brew house turns into a real challenge as far as development. Developing, redeveloping it for uh, uh, modern use. And 
then of course the, the brewery on top of the hill closed in 2003. And uh, I don't know if this is got it, my new gadget here. This is a well, the Tumar Historic District. Basically, this is the old brew house area. The Schmidt Mansion's in here up on top of the hill, and we've got the Henderson House and the Crosby House across the river. The area that we're, and then the RST Cellars is up on top of the hill here. The area that we're interested in is this area down here. George Heidberg owns this much of the property right now. He's a developer out of Chehalis. He bought the property in 2005. He has if you look up George Heidkirchen online, you'll find he has a large collection of rather unusual buildings. Pretty much most of them in the same status as the old brew house. <laughs> so, um, of course, this is what it looks like. This is some of the interior. And uh, actually, this, this is the part that we're all most familiar with. And, um, this is the part that I say is such a challenge to develop. And some of the, the interior shot on the first floor, and you can see it's got a nice tile floor, tile on the walls. Uh, the first floor is a lot nicer than the rest of the building. I mean, it turns into a very utilitarian structure up above the first floor. The part that, I gotta get this. So if you can see this from the, you, this is the part they're familiar with. This is the part of the building that we're really interested in because it's, um, there's 100,000 square feet down there. The tower itself is about 10,000 square feet. And this is the interior of that space. It's, um, it's about 21,000 square feet. It's 300 feet long and 70 feet wide. And this is the area that we like to turn into a community gathering space for family reunions, um, dinners like, or lunches, dinners, you know, large meeting space. Thurston County has sort of a shortage of large meeting spaces. This is the space under that, that the basement. This is, of course, the same size. It's about, uh, but it's got all these posts in it. But again, art galleries and other uses could be used down there. Uh, this is a site plan that an architect provided a while ago. Uh, it shows, this is, the, this is the large space that we just had up. This is the tower. This is, um, more warehouse space down there. Their proposal and part of George Heidgerken's proposal is to add additional square footage building down there. And, the, and there's also, this area would become a parking garage. The Schmidt, Schmidt Mansion is about right about here. The parking garage would, park, uh, would set up against the hill and wouldn't obst obstruct the view of the Schmidt Mansion. Um, the problem is, one of the problems is this whole area is a wetland or a wetland buffer. So the challenges of developing additional space down there are really big. How about the road? What about the two? Uh, we, yeah. The, the, the road right now is, would be off Custer Way. And of course, it's a single lane road right now. And that's another one of the challenges. We've got a list of challenges about this long on, a, on one of the next slides. <clears throat> On rehabilitation of grass, we also we like that quote that it's a regional asset, it's a regional responsibility, and we can develop that a little bit further too. Um, preservation actions is on the National Register of Historic Places, um, and it's been on the ten most endangered properties list for the Washington State Historical Society. Making um, action. George Heidgerken bought the property in 2010. The covenant prohibiting the production of alcohol was removed. Um, the city of Tumwater, the Port of Olympia, Washington State University, uh, South Sound Community College, and some other, um, all went together and um, did this craft brewing and distillery center study. Um, that would be a plan to turn the area 
into a facility for beer and distilling, sort of like what, or what uh, Walla Walla is for wine. So they, this study came up, it would create about 600 jobs and be training for distillers and brewers, um, have micro incubators for small breweries. Uh, that study's online if you want to look it up. Um, Potentially, here's the potential uses we see as a visitor center, gateway to the Olympic Peninsula. It's right, at, of course, at the intersection of 101 and on Highway 5 and I-5. Um, we'd like to see a regional museum. Thurston County doesn't have a regional museum. Um, we'd add industry and art, like things like railroads, our logging, fishing, the other activities that went on in our area, um, conventions. A whole list of things that could happen, in, especially in that big, large space. Um, so, if it's such a great deal, how come private industry hasn't been taken over? <laughs> and uh, here's the reasons. The site access, of course, is terrible. It's a single lane road. Um, the cost to develop the road is about $10 million. By the time you build a large retaining wall, two lanes, sidewalk, and then down around the building. Um, it's all the wetlands, and what's not wetlands is in you know, a wetland buffer, and of course you're on the riparian zone for the Deschutes River right there as well. Uh, utilities are an issue. Parking, once you get down to the bottom of the hill at this impossible road, there's no place to park. So <laughs> there's gotta be a parking garage built. Uh, the whole place will have to be seismically retrofitted, of course. And uh, the buildings are in, Surprisingly good shape for as long as they've been set down there and been ignored, but there are some issues that will have to be uh, rebuilt. And of course, they were all built as warehouses, so they'll have to be upgraded for commercial use. <coughs> so, as what we've asked, what we've we think George has had it long enough, and of course. Um, We've been working on this for 10 years. We'd really like to see the public involved with the project. We went to the county and asked them to form a special purpose district. And these are the reasons why. And the brew house is iconic to the entire county. Um, I, we go to like things like the Mushroom Fest and people always ask, what are you going to do about the old brew house? And our response is, what are we going to do about the old brew house? Because it's going to take all of us under this concept. Um, there is a demand for large meeting spaces. Um, the Cowlitz Trail is kind of interesting in that is how Native Americans have been walking from the Cowlitz River up to Cowlitz Trail a long time before the Europeans ever showed up. So that's an ongoing transportation route through there. That's where they transition from walking to the, on the on Puget Sound. Um, build a sense of community pride, and uh, so there's how we do it. With a special countywide district, distrib it, dist it distributes the cost countywide, and we'd ask the special purpose district to assume ownership of the building, <coughs> and then offer portions of the complex to private partners. The Parks and Recreational Service area. It would require the cities and the counties to agree. We have to go to a vote, a public vote, to not only form the district, but also uh, pass the property tax that we're proposing. Uh, and it's about an $80 million project, uh, if you're going to do the whole thing. financial plan. Well, there's concern, of course, everybody's got a, a view of what they want to do with the taxpayers' dollars. And uh, so, in the meantime, the Friends of the Old Brew House, or the Old Brew House Foundation, asked for a grant from the Thurston County Historic Commission, and we built this little museum, our portable museum. 
Um, it obviously looks like the top of the old brew house. We took to the mushroom festival. We take it to other street fairs. And uh, this particular picture, I think, is at the Tumwater Brew Fest. And this is Paul Knight, who was the brewmaster at Olympia Brewery before, well, before he retired in 1997, I think. And this is a piece of the equipment that was in the 1930s brewery that's a part of our, part of our display. And we've got an additional grant to enhance our displays more along the lines of Thurston County history. <clears throat> so that's about all I've got. Can you take some questions? Sure. Do you have any questions? Yeah. You went over real quickly the, the concept that the Olympia is going to have a municipal park district. How would, if that is approved, how would that affect a, a countywide park district? Can they do away with it? Uh, because if they, if they approve yeah. that this year, that's going to stop any kind of a countywide district. Yeah, I don't know. We're, we're really looking, trying to figure out how that all is going to add up. And actually, Cynthia Stewart is more on speed on all this municipal special purpose districts than I. Well, it's not like the city of Olympia doesn't care about the brew house. <clears throat> it's like the city of Olympia doesn't care about the brew house. Uh, I think there's some provincialism involved in the county. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but I find that stronger amongst the leaders, the leadership, than I do amongst the citizens. It's really, I'd say 95% of the people ask, what are you going to do about the brew house? And we always respond with this, what are we going to do about the brew house? And people want to help. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. And if it doesn't play out in the next year or so, I'm done. <laughs> yes? How much does he want for the old brew house? We haven't asked George, Mr. Heidegger, how much he wants for the old brew house. Um, until we get this act together between, let me start over. The city of Tumwater has been running lead on this thing, and they've had a pretty tight, what I call a pretty tight grip. And uh, I, we have been preaching that it's a regional asset, it's a regional responsibility for 10 years. And finally, about three months ago, we finally went to the uh, Tumwater City Council and said, you guys need to let go. We need this, we, need, we want to go to the county, we want to ask them to form a special purpose district and put this as a regional responsibility. And we've done that. Um, we've had two discussions with the county commissioners that's still an ongoing discussion how that's all going to work. And did I answer your question? No. Another, another question on that same thing. Is there any projected costs? It's about $80 million. So if you take $80 million and you spread it, and our proposal is to go to a uh, property tax of about, uh, it would be about $75 per year on a $250,000 house. That generates about six million dollars, and we'd use that six million dollars to start picking away at the building. We we have the attitude too that if the building was built out tomorrow, we'd have about a hundred thousand square feet of empty space. So there's no reason to go down and do the complete project. We can phase it out over periods of time. Are there any alternatives as far as access goes? Yeah. yeah, they're all about ten million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, I, I I like the road down the hill better than the other alternative is to come across with a bridge. And I think a bridge, by the time you provide what's required for a, a modern bridge, as far as sidewalks, lanes, parking, you know, it'd be a really large impact to that riparian zone in there. I'd rather see it come down the hill. Does that $80 million include the purchase price of the property? In the it room? does. A, a supposed purchase price. I know, it's a guess. But yeah. yeah. We also think we could get grants and donations. And of course, as the county continues to grow over the next 20 years, that $75 per household should go down as the property tax base increases. More questions? Any more questions? 
Okay, let's give Rob a round of applause. Okay, Rob, uh, you haven't been here, but what we normally, in the past, what we normally, have you? No. Okay, what we normally do for, for speakers, what we always do, not normally, is we gift a book on, uh, on behalf of the speakers in the South Sound Reading Sound Foundation, one of the groups we support. So uh, I had the pleasure of picking out a book that I thought would match somewhat here, so I picked one called Einstein, the Class Hamster Saves the Library. Close as I could get. So, uh, you're trying to save the brew house and save the library. Here. So, if you wouldn't mind signing that and gift it to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take care of this.